What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 woodworking tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to create plans from your models inside of Fusion 360. So we're going to use our box model that we did last time and we're going to create actual plans from this and I'll walk you through how to do that, um, some of the different options, things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first things first, when you have your model, and this is the box model that we worked on earlier this week, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna save that. So you wanna start by saving this model. Um, it's gonna ask you to do that before you can go over into drawing mode. But once you've saved your model, you can click on this little design drop down right here. There's an option at the bottom for drawing from design. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a drawing from this box design. So we're gonna click on from design, and over here on the right hand side of the page it's going to ask us for a little bit of information so it's going to ask us if we had a template which one we wanted to use we don't have a template at this point um, you can create one in the future but for now we'll just use the from scratch template um, as well as things like the page size and the units so I'm gonna leave my page size at 11 by 17 and I'm gonna leave my units in inches and I'm gonna click on OK and so when I click on OK, what this is going to do is it's going to take me into drawing mode. And when you first go into drawing mode, what you're going to notice is this automatically puts you in a place-based view. Um, it puts you in a place-based view mode. So basically it's asking you to place your first view from your model inside of this drawing. So in order to do that, we're just going to click. And so once we've done that, that's going to place a view inside of our drawing. So you can see how this pops up a window. It has a project name. Um, so it actually has a project folder as well as the title of your file. So it has those in here. You can add other text and stuff down here as well, but it also adds this first drawing view. And notice that when we clicked in here, this pops up a little window on the right hand side where we can adjust different things about our drawing view. So for example, this base view that we placed, we could set this to maybe a top view if we wanted to look at our box straight up and down. You could set it to an isometric view if you wanted to look at this from a 3D standpoint. Um, so what I'm gonna do for right now is I'm gonna place this in at a top mode. And so one thing you're gonna notice about this is this is where you can set things like your style. And let's look at our scale first. So I wanna make this a little bit bigger because it's not very big on my sheet right now. So in order to make this bigger, because Fusion 360 is adding all of these to scale, so you can come in here and you can set a different scale. So one to two is gonna give me a much larger image of my box. So now that we've made that bigger, let's take a look at the style. The style is where you're gonna set the way that this viewport looks. So you can set this to show just your visible edges, um, your visible and your hidden edges, as well as a shaded view. So if you don't want this to look like it's made of wood, you can click on the shaded view in order to select that. And then the last one would give you a shaded view with hidden edges. So notice how you can adjust these different things, but it's not going to apply until you click on OK. But notice when I clicked OK, this applied this basically as a two-dimensional view looking top down of my box with a just a uh, black and white view. And you can always adjust these just by clicking on your view, right clicking and going to edit view. And so that'll allow me to adjust this. So for example, if I wanted this to be shaded, I can click on shaded and I can click on close. Well, now I have a shaded view of my box as opposed to the black and white. So you can edit your views by right clicking and clicking edit view. And so before we go any further, let's take a look at our workspace for where we're gonna create our drawings. So this is going to be our workspace where our actual drawing is going to go. On the left hand side, you're gonna have options for your different views that are in here. And this is gonna allow you to turn different things on and off. So for example, if I only wanted to show like my wood base piece, I could turn off all of my side pieces just by clicking on this right here. So this would show just my wood base piece as opposed to my side pieces. Notice how when I check or uncheck these, I can turn them on or off in my view. This is your browser, kind of like what you have in your regular Fusion 360 modeling space. And then you have a toolbar at the top of the page where you can adjust your different views. You can modify and move things around. You can add dimensions and text. Then you can also output this to a PDF file. And then down at the bottom, you've got similar settings to the ones that you have in Fusion 360 having to do with your actual workspace and how it looks. So things like you can adjust the fonts, 
that you have in here. Things like you can um, turn your title block on and off, you can adjust your sheet size, so you can turn all of those things on and off down below, as well as some different edit functions as well. So like fit, for example, is going to fit your drawing view to your screen right here. So that's going to get you the most view for the real estate that you have on your screen. So now let's talk a little bit about adding some extra views because a lot of the time what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to show multiple different views of the same object. There's a couple different ways that we can do this. So the easiest way to do this is going to be to use what's known as a projected view. And so a projected view is going to use a parent view, so in this case this one, and it's going to project that in a certain direction. So in order to like look, get a side view of this box, for example, you would click on projected view, and then notice how you can move your mouse around in order to get different views of different parts of your box. So you can see how as you move your mouse around, this is actually going to give you views of your box based on this parent view. So for example, if I was to click right here, notice that this basically places a view as if you were to project this straight down. So what that does is basically allows you to create like front elevation views or side elevation views or other things like that. And then if you move your mouse diagonally, it gives you this 3D view. I'm not as big of a fan of that one because you just don't get quite the control on the view, but you can use that as a projected view as well. And so if I was to hit the enter key, then what that's gonna do is that's gonna place those views. And now what you're gonna notice is you have multiple different views of the same object in here. So you're basically looking at this from multiple different vantage points. And notice that you can move these around by clicking and dragging on this line right here. And one thing's really interesting in the projected view, um, basically your views are locked together. So in the sense that this view is aligned with this one right here. And if you click and drag, the other objects are gonna move with it, right? So these are like locked to the parent view. So when you move the parent view, your uh, other views are going to change as well. So you can see if I click and drag this over here, things start getting a little bit weird, but they're always locked so that they're gonna be projected in a straight line from this view. So if you use the parent view um, projected view function, that's always going to be the case. Now, sometimes you don't necessarily want that. So let's say for example, that I wanted this view to instead of being standing up like this, I wanted it to be rotated so that the bottom was down. So what I could do is I could delete this view out just by clicking on it and clicking delete or hitting delete on your keyboard. But then I could also, under my drawing views, I could add a new base view. So a new base view is going to be a new view from your model that doesn't have anything to do with this one. So I could add a new base view right here. And it's going to ask me for a reference. In this situation, that's only going to be your wood box. Um, it's basically asking you what to show and it's asking you for the representation. We're not gonna to worry too much about that right now. But what we wanna do in this situation is we wanna set the scale to be the same. So this is gonna be a half inch. And we want this to be a, we'll call it a left view for right now. So I could go ahead and place this right here. So if I click on this and then click on OK, this new view has been placed in here that's not linked to any of these views. So I can take this and move it wherever I want to just by um, single clicking and then clicking again in order to place that. So I could either set that over here or if I wanted to, I could also put it down here. So if I wanted to organize this, for example, where all of my views were over here, and then we added a table over here with our material list, then we could do that. One thing you're gonna notice is this is not shaded the same. So we're just gonna go back in and right click on it, click on edit view, and we're just gonna set this to shaded. And I'm gonna click on close. And so what that's done is that's now given me a whole nother view right here. And so you can do this as many times as you want. So um, I'm not 100% sure if you drop a whole bunch of these in here, if it affects your performance or not. I don't know the answer to that one. But you can use this in order to place your views over here. And then let's go ahead and let's add another view up here, but let's call it an isometric view. So instead of having something that's straight along like this that you can measure, let's add another base view over here. And we're just going to click. And then I want to select this one to be a, we'll call it a northwest, or let's go to a northeast isometric view. So what that's going to do is that's going to create a 3D view 
of your box. And we'll go ahead and set the scale to maybe a half inch so that we have a 3D view of this. And we'll click on OK. So we've added this new view over here. And I'm going to click and move it up just a little bit. And you have to be a little bit careful of this because you can see how this kind of jumps around on me. That's because it keeps inferencing to these points. You can see how it inferences to these because it's guessing that I want to place my view right there, which I do not. Um, so just be careful. If this jumps around on you, you're probably getting some inferencing going on in there. But I'm going to go ahead and right click on this, edit my view, and we're going to set this one to shaded as well. So now I've got a shaded 3D view of my box on this page. So one thing I want to draw your attention to is there's a little function right here called detail view. What detail view does is it basically allows you to draw a circle inside of your model in order to create an enlarged view of something. So let's say for example that I wanted to create a larger view of this joint right here. Well what I could do is I could click on detail view and then it's going to ask me to select a parent view. So it's basically asking me what I want to blow up, which in this case is going to be this model. And then it's going to ask me to draw a circle. So I draw the circle by single clicking, moving my mouse out, and then clicking again. And so you can see how whenever I do that, what that does is that creates this blown up view of my corner right here. So you can see how this creates an enlarged view to whatever scale you want of whatever's inside of this circle. So you can see how you get kind of a circular clipping along this object. But if I click on OK, then that's going to come in and that's going to render this. Notice that this automatically adds a, um, it adds a title in here telling you that this reference is detail A. And this has an A letter associated with it. So you can use this in order to create blown up views of different areas. So now let's talk a little bit about adding dimensions. And so with dimensions, what you want to do is you want to show different measurements. So the way that we're going to show different measurements is by using the dimension function right here. If you click on this button right here, there's a lot of different dimensions you can add. We're going to focus specifically on linear dimensions in this case because there's nothing really curved on this model. But the way this is going to work is let's say we wanted to add a dimension showing the length of our box. So if we wanted to, for example, um, show how long our box is, we can add a dimension by clicking on dimension and then we can single click on one point and single click on another point and move your mouse down and click again. And so what that does is that basically adds in this dimension on your sheet. So you can see how long this is based on the points that we clicked on. So you can do this as many times as you want. So for example, I could click here and here in order to show the height. I could click here and here in order to show the width. And so you can hit the enter key in order to be done with that. And so you can edit these by double clicking on them. One thing I have not seen in the dimensions is I don't see any way for it to automatically add the symbol. Like for example, this is 11 and a half inches. So when you double click on this, this allows you to edit the text that's in here. Well, the actual dimension length is what's inside of these, uh, these little uh, symbols. Well, you can see how this is flashing a cursor in here. You can actually add additional things in here. So for example, I could type the inches sign right here and have that show up inside of my dimension. Just make sure that you add that outside of the little uh, symbols right here. You could also add text if you wanted to. So you could do like inches high or something like that. Really anything you type in is going to show up after the symbol or after the, uh, after the dimension that you have in here. So you can use this to add various dimensions. And notice that you can move them around um, using these base points just like we did before. So you can click on all of these different grips and then click again in order to move them around. So you can move this like closer or further away or other things like that. Um, so we can talk more about dimensions in the future. There's also a tool in here for text. So if you wanted to add some additional text, so whatever you wanted that to be, you could single click in here, click again to create a corner, and then you can just add test text. So whatever text you want, and then you could adjust how tall that is by entering values in here. So I could set this as tall or as short as I want, as well as selecting different kinds of font, different justifications, other things like that. So you could add text to your image 
by doing something like that. Then the last thing I want to talk about, you can insert like images and other things like that as well if you want to uh, show like a photo of something. I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm not really going to worry about the symbols for this video. The last thing I want to talk about is a table. And so what I want to do is I want to add a table in here. And so you can actually use this in order to reference a view and show information outside, out of that model. So for example, if I click on this button right here, or in order to reference this, then I can come in here and I can click again in order to place basically a parts list. And so what this parts list is going to do is this is going to add this table right here. So wherever I click in order to do that, and we may want to, we'll go ahead and place this right here for right now. So notice I can place this in my view and I can move it around. There's a little bit of overlap here. So probably what I would do in this situation is I would, I want to click on my wood box version two right here. And I just want to move that over here. Notice that the dimensions that were associated with this moved along with it. But now I want to take a, now I want to take a look at the pieces that I have in here. And so what this does is this gives me a list of the pieces that we have in here. So remember how we uh, named all of these as components? Well, those components now show up in this list. And one thing that I probably should have done is instead of mirroring these pieces, I probably should have just copied them because then, then this would show a quantity of two rather than mirrored pieces. But you can still see how you can um, see that you have two of these front pieces in here, two of these side pieces, and your wood base piece. And notice that this also added little reference things to your model, which you can move around, but you can use this to reference your different parts and pieces. So for example, I can use this to reference all of these different pieces just by single click moving this around and placing these wherever I want them to go. And so once you're done with this, you can output this to a PDF file. So for example, and one thing to note is if I decide to move this over a little bit, the cool thing about it is this image that's a projected view will move along with it. So we're running out of room a little bit on this sheet. I probably could have been a little more efficient with my usage of space, but notice that I can kind of move all of this stuff around in order to make it all fit. Um, then I can kind of drag this down so that it fits on the sheet. and we'll call it good. But once you're done, you can click on this output PDF and you can output this. Um, if you have multiple sheets in here, you can output all of those. Notice that you could add another sheet by using the quick add down here. But um, in this case, we're gonna go with current sheet. We can go ahead and click on open PDF and I'm gonna click on okay. And we'll go ahead and click on this folder and then I'm just gonna name this wood box plan sheet. I'm gonna click on save. And so when I save that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna save this as a PDF file. And it's also going to open it because I clicked on the open sheet. But you can see how what I've done is I've created this uh, view of my model. You can see how I've exported a PDF plan of my model, which I can then print or do whatever I want with that. Um, if you wanted this to come out to scale, you'd wanna print this to an 11 by 17 sheet of paper, um, just to make sure that your scale comes out properly. But note that it calls out your scale down below it gives you information about who drew it and when. Um, and then all of this other information shows up on here as well. So this is a really quick, easy way to create plans from your from your uh, models. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Did you know you could do all of this? Was this helpful to you? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.